Hello ladies and gentlemen, well, I'm doing a follow-up video to the Linux Deepin privacy issues from version 15.6 where the App Store communicated with the Chinese tracker CNZZ. So there's a couple of points I didn't address fully in that video and I'm going to start with this one. Are the privacy issues present in Manjaro or does it attempt to communicate with any trackers? And the answer is no, not that I can see because it has a different App Store in the Manjaro version. It's the AdRemove software. The AdRemove software is in Pamac. So you avoid the web interface version that comes with the Debian version of Dpin, or the default version of Dpin, which contains the tracking links. So this could be a useful alternative if you do want to use the Dpin desktop, which I have to admit does look quite pretty. Another point I didn't address was how to remove the tracking code. Well, you can't just remove the code from the App Store. Your options are really to remove or more like not to use the App Store because removing it is going to substantially break the operating system. So if I run the command sudo apps purge deep in App Store, which I strongly advise you don't do on your system, it's going to remove the dependency DDE, the deep in desktop environment, and that's going to break the upgrade path. Uh, funny that a similar thing happened with Ubuntu 18.04 when you tried to remove the tracking components there. But at least with Ubuntu, I reckon it stands a longer chance of survival, uh, more like, like long-term usage of the operating system. Because I reckon that as soon as you get an upgrade on Deepin, which they're a lot more common than Ubuntu, it's just going to break and really not upgrade. <laughs> I don't believe the upgrades of Deepin are particularly reliable to start with, let alone with the removal of DDE. Don't remove it. <laughs> just going to do no abort it. Go and install a different package manager like Synaptic. So now you have access to a package manager which is not going to send any tracking data. You can get away with doing that this time in version 15.6. With version 15.5 that would have really broken it because the tracking code was within the update manager. Now to look at a couple of the comments so from the Ferran OS dev. Damn, not even encrypting data. Damn deep in just damn, yeah. So I replied with, that's one of the most annoying things. If they disclosed what they were doing in an end user license agreement and encrypted the traffic, then I wouldn't be so bothered. The video would be titled, Deepin is doing what they say they're doing. But instead they get the label spyware and privacy nightmare. So yeah, that is my main issue at the moment. They're not actually disclosing what they're really doing. From Chris Ziong, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong there, but what Deepin is doing is sadly considered as the best practice in China. Most Chinese people are so accustomed to being spied on they don't realise it, until the CEO of Baidu, which is an even more evil version of Google, told everyone Chinese users are willing to exchange privacy for convenience. This controversial statement awakened the public for a short period of time, however 99% of the Chinese people forget things quickly and they continued using products from Baidu after a week or so, as if nothing happened. To be fair, you would get the same here. Oh, let's just look back at the privacy issues with Facebook and Cambridge Analytica. How many people have actually abandoned Facebook? Hmm. So in my humble opinion, unlike Baidu, Deepin still stands a chance. No Chinese tech company has a closer relationship with free software and the open source community than Deepin. Deepin is doing things wrong. Just tell them about it and hope for the best. This video, as well as your previous video on Deepin, got the job done. Absolutely, I totally agree with you there. Deepin still stands a chance. And honestly, if they went back to how they were in version 15.4 and before, with no spying or tracking of any kind, I would be the first to congratulate them. And I think it is very interesting on how Chinese people view software. They want products to be free. Free as in free beer, not free as in free open source. And inevitably with many free applications, you're paying for it with your privacy and your personal data. From Tyler Swagger, the optimist in me says, hey, maybe by turning off the spyware pings when you use NoTrack, they're simply taking note of you expressing that you don't wish to be tracked, similar to sending a do not track header in a browser. I don't usually defend Deepin's dodgy behaviour, but I won't exactly fault them for not tracking people who attempt to opt out. Now if they start hiding it when they detect you in a VM, that's when I'll say, okay, they're clearly trying to avoid a security audit here. Yes, exactly, if they go and disable all the tracking in a virtual environment, but leave it all running on a real system, 
then I will go and label them malware. As there is an interesting theory of the reasoning of why they're disabling the spyware pings. It is just a shame it is not consistent, in that when it sees no track, it just disables it permanently, rather than how it is at the moment when you've got to catch the operating system at specific times. But hey, maybe that is a reasoning of it. And to finish up, I wanted to show you some of the network traffic from the Archbase system. And for some reason, I've ended up with two different IP addresses. I think I had a bit of a conflict on MAC addresses within virtual environments. So yeah, one of them got bumped to a different IP address. There's nothing wrong here. Most of this is just package downloads from Deepin and the various Arch websites. And then the other IP address it ended up with. Most of this activity came from running Mozilla. I was opening and closing various different applications on there and didn't get anything. The tracking activity that was triggered was with Google and Mozilla's telemetry. So that's to do with Firefox, nothing to do with the operating system. So yeah, that was a follow-up to Linux Deep in version 15.6. I'm not rushing to do another of these videos for a while. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.